This is Twit. Let's talk about your book. All your face belongs to us. Is it? This is your first cashmere. Yeah, this is my first. Congratulations, uh, real technology book. Thank you. That's great. What you had written about other stuff before. Well, um, I when I was at Forbes, they turned my Bitcoin survival guide into like an ebook. Oh. Um, when I lived on Bitcoin back in 2013, back when Mark <laughs> Andreessen was really excited about it. <laughs> oh, so you're a Bitcoin bro too? Good. Yeah, well, my takeaway after living on Bitcoin was, wow, this is, um, you know, useful technology perhaps, but there is no utility at all to this as a payment method. This is purely speculative and will go away. Um, so shows what shows what I know. <laughs> oh, you 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 actually tried to survive on it. This is, I guess, this yeah. is a, this is something that they make you do at the New York Times. This is this is my favorite one. I tried to live without the tech giants. You try to literally get Apple, Google, Facebook, and Amazon out of your life. That was even worse than the Bitcoin problem. Yes, this is pre New York Times, but uh, yes, I tried to to cut the big tech giants to to show how difficult it is. Um, because I was always hearing from people all the time when we are making these complaints about technology that Google had done something wrong or Facebook was doing something that was annoying. People would say, these are free products. You don't have to use them. Yeah, uh, good luck. You know, <laughs> just don't use them if you're yeah. such a critic of them. And so I tried and just showed how, you know, Google is woven into everything that you do on the web. It is literally impossible to avoid Amazon because AWS is hosting most of the most of the tech out there. So yes, I showed that. Yeah, just, it was hell to try to live without them. Just block as you tried your a AWS on your router and see how far you get on the internet these days. <laughs> not, not, not very far, far at all. So your face belonged to us, uh, belongs to us, a secretive startup's quest to end privacy as we know it. Is, is it about Clearview? I haven't read it yet. They didn't send me a copy. Is it about Clearview? Well, I'll get you a copy. It is about Clearview AI and about the rise of facial recognition technology. Um, I kind of like went back to talk to all these early engineers who were working on it, you know, in the, the 80s and 90s and uh, the policymakers trying to pass laws, getting ready for it, some successful, most not. Uh, and yeah, and about Google and Facebook and all the all the different players that were trying to get computers to solve this incredible problem to recognize people's faces. And thanks to AI, they've gotten very good at it. Now we have to deal with the consequences. Your timing was almost as good as Michael Lewis's timing in betting himself with SBF. <laughs> it was because Clearview AI was hot, 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 hot until it was not, not, not. Um, well, they're still around, uh, you know, just signed another year long contract with the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, good. Uh, still working with the police just just announced um, that. Uh, well, they did. They didn't announce. I guess they'd done this for a while, and I just noticed it. But they're not honoring requests from Europe anymore to delete Europeans under oh. GDPR, and they're just continuing. How do they get away with that database? <gasps> uh, uh, <laughs> they have 30, 30 billion faces now in their database. Much of it scraped, right, from the inter the public internet. Or no? Scraped and bought from contractors. Wonton Tat, the technical co-founder, uh, basically says, like, I'll, I'll take faces wherever they come from. And sometimes has used good old Bitcoin or Ether to, to pay for it. Yeah, I, um, I remember when he was kind of, nobody knew, he was kind of secretive, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Were you the, you were the person who got the interview with him, weren't you? Yeah. Yes. What, you, you met him, like, <laughs> not in a parking garage, but practically. Yeah. So when I first heard about Clearview AI, they had not been reported on yet and the company was not keen to be reported on. So they were doing all these things to try to um, uh, get me to go away, including putting oh, an alert on my that's face. That's right. Yeah. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. Oh, this is going to be a good book. It is. It is a little dramatic. So, so they um, kind of, they retaliated by, well, no, no, because they didn't want you to think they had your face in their database, right? Well, they put an alert on my face. They wouldn't talk to me. No one, no one affiliated would. Peter Thiel wouldn't return my calls. You know, Paul Clement, this this lawyer, had written this memo for them for the police to tell police it was perfectly legal to use this app, um, which wasn't 
Totally true. Um, so I started talking to police officers and they would be really excited to talk to me at first because they wanted to tell me about Clearview AI and how well it worked and how it worked like nothing police had used before. And then they would offer to run a, a search of my face so that they could show me the results. And then every time they would stop talking to me, one of them told me I didn't have any results. And it <laughs> turned out that Clearview had an alert on my face. When a police officer uploaded my face, they would call the police officer and tell them, don't talk to her, you know, <sighs> Like we'll deactivate your app, you know, for doing this, and we so will that was we will bit, kick you out. Chilling. We will not allow your police department to use Clearview if you talk to this reporter. Mm -hmm. They did not they didn't want anyone talking to me, so it's kind of chilling because it showed me Clearview. Way I can see everyone law enforcement is searching for and control whether they're findable. And then it's you know it was it was kind of an early warning of how facial recognition technology can get used to monitor you know, investigative journalist or lawyers like Madison Square Garden, the events venue in New York City that has started uh, the barring all lawyers. Yeah. yeah, James Dolan. He doesn't like lawyers. They're annoying. They cost him a lot of money. So when they, anybody who works at a firm that has sued him tries to get into MSG now or Beacon Theater or uh, the Radio City Music Hall to see the Rockettes with their girl, their, their Girl Scouts troop, Girl Scouts troop, they get kicked out at the door. So it just kind of shows the power of facial recognition. And yet, you know, but so tech is always good. Yeah, tech's great. Go, oh, let's let's use more of it. The no fix for this bad problem is to use more of it. Isn't that obvious? So I I just figured after reading your exposés of this and and what a, a terrifyingly bad company this was that they would be gone. They're not only are they not gone, they're bigger than ever. There was and no consequence. Still... <laughs> right? They did have they did the investigations launched into them. They have spent a lot of money on lawyers, uh, including, Floyd, including Floyd Abrams, because they made the First Amendment defense, so they have a First Amendment right wow. to scrape all this public information from the internet and make it searchable, just he like He was Google, the Citizens United by face. Uh, advocate that won that, mm -hmm. that case in the Supreme Court. Uh, wow. And But where do they stand right now? They're in the clear, so to speak? So... The, they were investigated by a lot of privacy regulators a lot around the world who said that what they did was illegal. So they kind of pulled back and they're only working in the United States. They're dealing with a few lawsuits here uh, in California and Illinois and Vermont. But for the most part, they've just, you know, continued offering their services to police and um, and they're still there. And, you know, they herald this change this ability for pretty small actors to do something very powerful with this technology. And so now there's copycats, there's other public face search engines uh, that are not restricted to the police that are available to anybody. And so I feel like we're we're crossing that line uh, where this could just get out there and be everywhere unless we pull it back. Um, and I think it'd be kind of, I, I mean, I, I don't really wanna live in a world where you're identifiable all the time, everywhere you go, everything you do, you know, I, I think that would be a very chilling world to live in. Do we know who uses Clear AI? For instance, uh, when you now fly uh, in many airports, there, the, the ticket check-in will be face recognition. Mm -hmm. Is that Clear View, clear view AI? So there's many different facial recognition technology companies. Um, Clearview AI is not that one. Uh, what's different about Clearview AI is they kind of brought to the table this huge database of 30 billion faces. Most of the other companies say, okay, here's an algorithm, you bring the database. So what's happening at the airport hmm. is either the airline, you know, has your photo or it's running through the, um, like the TSA and, yeah, I mean, I can be very convenient. I, I talk about going to London because I, I went there to do some reporting for the book. And when you, I landed at Heathrow and instead of waiting for three hours in line at customs, I just walk up to like a kiosk, put my passport on the scanner. There's a biometric chip in your, in your passport. I look into a camera and it just matches, you know, me to my passport and I just walk in. So there's conveniences to this, but I, I think that, I'd like, I like using the scanner, but that doesn't mean that once I get to the UK, I want to be tracked, you know, everywhere where I go, where I go by surveillance cameras that uh, make it possible to follow me and see who I talk to and um, 
UK is kind of on the brink of that. It's convenient unless you try to opt out. If you say, and which you technically legally allowed to do, if you say, no, 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 I'm, uh, you know, do something else. Good luck. They don't. They, they're going to go. They don't like that. Um, I'm not. I mean, honestly, I just do it. I think, and I think I'm probably not alone at Disneyland, on the cruise ships, at the airport, uh, everywhere. Uh, they're starting to, uh, Amazon, Go stores. Right. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, I think, yes, it's there in terms of here's this token to allow you to access this service. But I think that's very different from you're easily identifiable when you're at a protest. So I've been thinking oh, a lot yeah, about it. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Like I've been thinking about it with the all these students right now uh, at campuses across the country who are protesting and, you know, being there and their faces are showing and they're saying whether they're for Israel or they're for Gaza. And you have these employers right now who are revoking some people's, yep. you know, job offers because of their political activity. And with these tools that exist now, you could take a photo of a bunch of student protesters and you can go run their photo and know what their name and if there are these kinds of consequences for that political activity, it happens like that. Um, and I, I really do think that's, that is chilling and it will change our ability to express our opinions and yeah, do things that are embarrassing in public uh, because it will so easily be able to be tracked back to you by either a government or a company or just normal people if we all have an app like this on our phones. So I, it's a really important distinction. So when I use uh, Clear, for instance, at the airport, I'm giving them, I think I give them an iris scan, actually, uh, as well as face. But that's a private database that they're matching with my subsequent appearances there. Oh, yeah, that's him. We've already verified that person. That's not a now public database. It can't. Are, do we know that these private companies that are doing this kind of data collection are not sharing it with uh, companies that do things like Clearview where they have a, a massive database and they match pictures in the public with that database? In other words, should I worry about using, let's say, Clear? Well, I'm sure you've read the terms of service. So oh, you know exactly of course what I have. Your data. I know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe I should go back and look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think there's a difference between facial recognition for your convenience to get a benefit yeah. versus it getting used against you like by Madison Square Garden because you're a lawyer and they don't want you to go in there. I want to go to the MSG sphere in Vegas, but now I'm, I think James Dolan may keep keep, keep me out. <laughs> don't say anything bad about him Never. if you want to get in there. Love the Dolans. <laughs> I think they are great stewards of the nation's <laughs> concert and hockey venues. Alex, what do you do when faced Knicks. with uh, face, go Knicks, <laughs> when faced with uh, face recognition? Do you decline? No, I, I mean, I'll use it. I, I think at this point, like it's, you know, it's one tool in a handful um, that companies just have to track us. And, you know, I don't know. I think that like, I'm going to try to make decisions. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of a crazy thing to say, but I'm not going to make decisions that are going to get me on the wrong end of these tools. And honestly, like um, if I mean, I think that like James Dolan has a right to prohibit lawyers who are suing him from coming into his. Well, venue. what about somebody who nice. works for a firm but isn't suing him like that mom and her Girl Scout troop who had to stand outside where they went to watch the Rockettes? Uh, she you wasn't know, suing think, him. Like, I yeah. guess he has and the right business, to. He owns it. Right. His, and his business will face consequences from it because yeah, he's never going to go to MSG. Like he, yeah, you know, he might lose his doing, liquor if license. You're using it, yeah. yeah. If you're using it in this manner, then you, you know, I mean, maybe you'll, you'll, you know, be fine when Taylor Swift comes to town, but there are going to be moments where you're going to need to get butts in the seats and you're not going to be able to do it. I mean, and look at the popularity of the Knicks. It's just gone down the drain with him as the owner. So really? I think these strong arm tactics, um, they end up, you know, coming back to haunt you. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. With all the same fun of IT Pro TV, ACI is amplified with new solutions for all your IT training needs. Entertain your team while they learn. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team. 